from the creators who brought you RuPaul's Drag Race and Million Dollar Listing. This is World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the Wow Report. We are counting down, as usual, the top 10 things that made us go wow. Wow, 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 wow this past week. And uh, I'm co-founder of World of Wonder, Fenton Bailey, joined by James St. James, the editor of The Wow Report, which is our, me. It's our blog. And uh, sitting in for Tom Campbell this week, Blake Jacobs. I am so excited to welcome today, back again, uh, no strangers to this show, our very special guest, Michelle Visage. And the reason, well, we love having you for any reason, Michelle, but Thank you. the Thank reason you're here today Number 10. Is because your documentary, Explant, is premiering its world premiere at the Tribeca Film Festival this weekend. It's called Explant. It's all about your journey with your uh, breast implants, for which you are obviously um, well known. Uh, well wait, 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 this is a, it's a movie, it's a one off, or it's a series. I, I, I don't think I know about this. It's it's a one-off documentary. Uh -huh. um, you know, I've been chasing health for the better part of 20 years and couldn't understand why going doctor to doctor, blood test to blood test, you know, everything that you could imagine. Uh, there was no stern, no stone left unturned. And uh, after I went online, I kind of fell into a black hole of somebody saying, did you ever think about it was your breast implants? And I was like, well, actually, I have thought it was my breast implants, but every doctor that I brought it up with, you know, has told me the FDA approved them. They're totally safe. They'd send me data, tell me, you know, you're crazy. It's got nothing to do with them. Don't be so quick to take them out. And then I just found this incredible Facebook group. Um, and at the time, there was like 60,000 women in it, in it who was experiencing pretty much the same thing I was experiencing, all due to their breast implants. And now the group is over 120,000 members strong, and it's it's uh, saving lives, uh, stopping women from getting implanted or helping women realize that they're not crazy. Because most doctors say that we're hysterical. We need a glass of wine or we need some Prozac. Ugh. We need a massage. No, it's true. And, and what I've learned from it is so far further reaching than just about breast implant, breast implant illness. There are female doctors that, you know, say that breast implant illness doesn't exist. And and that's the most damaging to my soul. The males, I, I actually sadly expect it from. But the female- well, wait, wait a minute, Michelle. Tell me what exactly are the symptoms that you, you had and what are the things that women should be looking out for? Well, there are so many symptoms that it would take an hour of just talking to me, but sure. the information will be um, on the Explant documentary page through the okay. Wonder website. So many resources, so much information, but I can tell you what my symptoms were. Yeah. And my symptoms were extreme brain fog, weight gain up and down, um, uh, pain throughout my body, like unexplained pain. Mm -hmm. um, you sleep so tired all the time. For me, the biggest sign was I believe fully that my breast implants caused my autoimmune disease, which is called oh. Hashimoto's. And, um, you know, it doesn't, it's something that runs in the family. Nobody in my family has it. You know, you know it, it just... If your body fights an invader, let's say when you get a cold or the flu, your immune system goes up in arms and it does what it's supposed to do and it karate chops and kicks out the invader. But if you have an invader in your body 24 hours a day, seven days a week, I don't have to be a science person or a doctor to know that that's probably what's causing my autoimmune response. So that's how I kind of came to the conclusion being a, a lay person, a smart lay person, but a lay person nonetheless, rather than a scientist, um, that it had to be my breast implants. So I went on this journey and my husband's the one who's an executive producer on this who said, why are you not documenting this? You absolutely need to share this because no doctor could tell me all my blood tests turn up fine, you know, except for the autoimmune. But it was like, how did I get the autoimmune? Why do I, there were days that I've, you know, filmed or I've, been on this earth where I have depersonalization, where I'm like looking down at myself. I'm in such a fog that I can't even function. And it's all due to these breast implants, these big blobs of silicone. And the worst part of it is the FDA wants nothing to do with it. They don't want to hear anything what these women are saying. They've been fighting this for years. Huh. And it's kind of old white men, when these women are crying to them about dying, they're just kind of looking down. It looks like they're 
probably playing tic-tac-toe on their paperwork instead of looking these women in the eyes. Because if I were there at the FDA, FDA 30 years ago, or even last year or two years ago when they went, I would have said to them, sir, if this were your wife, or, or if I were your daughter, would you be treating me or listening to me the same way that you're treating these women? Well, that's right. I just have to jump in because, Michelle, you know, you practically, you did force us to make this film, and I'm so glad you did. <laughs> um, because, you know, it's hard to say no to you at the best of times. But, <laughs> but, but seriously, I think you're completely right. You identify this sort of male patriarchal refusal to hear what women are saying. And the extraordinary, one of the extraordinary things about the film that Jeremy Simmons has directed is that it tells you the whole story of the breast implant. And yeah. he goes back and actually interviews the first woman in America to ever receive a breast implant. What? And among, it is shocking and jaw dropping to learn that the number one cosmetic procedure in the world today, which is breast implants, was never regulated from the beginning. They yeah. would just stuff anything in. And yeah. in the heyday with Anna Nicole Smith, you know, and the, the trend for massive breasts, it was a wild west. They were sticking bags of string in people and the whole thing was completely unregulated. It, it, it's it's jaw dropping and appalling and you just kind of can't believe what you're seeing, right? But we're also just feeling the kind of ramifications of that now. So when things aren't regulated by the FDA, you can basically do anything that you want and they were shoving string implants in and they were shoving sawdust in women. They were putting anything that they could to try to make it work. And here's the big ah. misconception. A lot of people think, well, I have saline, I'm safe. And uh, this documentary, let me just also clarify, this is not an anti-plastic surgery. This is a pro-transparency film. This is just, if you want to do it, at least my, my whole goal with this is besides letting women know that they're not alone and they're not crazy, is to force the hand of the surgeon, whether they be male or female, to tell the patient, like we have to sign a HIPAA waiver, we should have to sign a piece of paper that says, the doctor has explained to me that I may possibly get an autoimmune, a connective tissue disorder, even breast cancer, ALCL, which is related to breast implants. This is a possibility. The chances are low, but the possibility is still out there to have some kind of complication. Do you understand, has this been explained? Yes, sign the paper. Instead, what they've given is a black box warning. The problem is, unlike cigarettes, when we buy a pack of cigarettes, we see somebody with a stoma. We see blackened lungs. We see somebody in a coffin every time we go to take a cigarette. When you get your breast implants in the box, you're under anesthesia. We never get the box. We don't see the box. The black box warning is stupid. What we need is a guarantee and a mandate that surgeons have to explain that the possibility and potential for some sort of lifelong illness, possibly even cancer or death, could come from having breast implants and even butt implants, let's be honest here. Any kind of implant that's going into your body carries this sort of danger and should be flagged. It took how many years to get cigarettes to have that? We can't wait that long. So many women are ill, so many women are incapacitated, have died because of breast implants and we're just being shooed away because doctors wanna drive their you know, Rolls Royces and, and have mansions. And God bless them, they went to medical school, they went to you know, a specialization and they did their rounds, they did their residencies, they have to pay off their bills, but this is our lives that we're being, that are, that are being gambled with. And, and, and the reason that. it's called Explant is because Michelle Visage over the course of her journey uh, gets them removed and this is a trend. A number of women are, are, are getting them removed and it's um, with, with significant improvements on the health, right? How are you feeling, Michelle? Yes. So it's, t for me, it's been better and better and better and, and if you see, this is spoiler alert, but in, in the documentary, there's only two laboratories in the whole United States that do toxic, um, toxic evaluations. And we had to go to Texas to get my toxicity done. And they checked my urine, my nails, my hair, my skin, my sweat, all, all of that to see, um, cause I never had a leak. This is just to disprove the theory that if you have saline implants, they're healthy. There is no healthy implant. The danger lies in the sac of the implant because there's 40 plus chemicals that the shell, the casing is made of. There was silicone leakage in every single part of my body. Wow. Dr. Patton, I know, Dr. Patton, who's a neurologist who's been um, fighting on our cause since 1962, he went to medical school with Dr. Giroux, who was the creator of the breast implant. He's been saying from the beginning as a neurologist, this is going to cause a problem to the neuroendocrine system. 
and he has been our ally for that long and he's been saying it all along. He said that there's silicone leakage in every single part of my body. He said the median time to get rid of that is about two years, but I know women that have taken up to 10 years to detox. So although I feel so much better, um, I'm hitting a block only because of menopause. But once we get past that, then I think already the first year I was explanted, I felt a veil lift. I felt freedom. I felt like, oh my goodness, this absolutely is my story. But there are plenty of women that the minute they wake up from surgery are healed and cured. That wasn't my case. I have to go through a detox process and all that stuff, but I feel so much better and there's not one ounce of regret, not one ounce. Great. And I that... fight for these women who haven't, then this affects trans women as well. Yeah. This affects all yeah. women that, that decide to implant themselves. Well, Michelle, congratulations. Um, it's an amazing film. You and Jeremy and your husband, David, have done a fantastic job. And I really recommend people go see it. It's at the Tribeca Film Festival this Sunday. Um, we'll post on the WOW Report where you can get tickets. Um, yeah, great. Now, Michelle, don't go away because um, Blake is going to talk about something at number nine and needs your input. Number nine. I've been to the movies more this month than in the past year. Well, obviously, but in the past two years, I would say. <laughs> um, and I saw A Quiet Place 2. Uh -huh. Loved it. Uh -huh. And then last night saw a, The Conjuring 3. Oh, my God. I'm so <laughs> upset. <laughs> didn't necessarily love it. It didn't hate it. But what did you think? Well, first of all, I haven't seen A Quiet Place 2. I've been dying to see it. I haven't oh, time I thought you had seen it. No, but what I have seen is the piece of shit known as The Conjuring. The devil made me do it. <laughs> I don't know what the devil made them do, but it wasn't make a movie. And I'm a huge, huge fan of The Conjuring. I couldn't wait. I, Vera Farmer got to me as like a goddess. And then Patrick Wilson is like everything about them. I love, I love them as Ed and Lorraine. Like I'm a huge Conjuring fan. Just know this. And we watched it and it was such a letdown. I don't know how you didn't hate it because the other movies were at such a high caliber. For, but isn't for this a movies. case of, of uh, declining? Like every one is a little bit worse than the one before because that I one with the doll was just, that was a You better more. not talk about Annabelle. <laughs> Annabelle, Annabelle was alone. just, it was the worst. It I'm was sorry. amazing. It was amazing. <laughs> but you absolutely cannot say that about the devil made me do it because it was a freaking disaster well Vera's, Vera's outfits were very they were a look <laughs> all of them was wrong her wigs were wrong it was like girl well, i think patrick wilson is so handsome too i do well, love me him. too but yeah in this movie they did him dirty i'm telling you all of it was like I love their marriage. I love their relationship. It was just not scary. It was not good. It was but stupid. are all these really supposed to be real? Is is every story? I, I don't believe any of I mean, it. This this one, like the reality of it, I was like, I mean, this is a stretch. It's like, embellished, I'm sure, but you know, they play the real recordings at the end of, of yeah. the movies, and and you know, they are whatever. Whatever you take away from it, what you whatever you make of it is you know your thing but this one was so stupid where well, the commercials Annabelle are Annabelle so gets... stupid the cover the, the boy looks sort of cute is the boy cute who's the actor oh he's, he's cute so, yeah he's, he's new but he's okay. cute yeah um i would definitely suggest seeing a quiet place too um oh definitely gonna i would see i would if you can watch the first one Oh, oh, the first one is so it. amazing, and you have to see it in a theater. You cannot see it at home. You yeah. have because everyone in the audience is holding their breath the entire time. Nobody, so everyone is afraid to make a sound. I remember I had going to the bathroom and like hitting a chair, and everyone was like, "Shh, what are you doing?" You know, like everyone was afraid the monster was going to get me because I was eating popcorn and I hit a chair. <laughs> have you all watched? And I, I won't take over the podcast, but have you all watched and discussed Marianne? No. Ooh, it's on Netflix. It's a French movie. Get into it. I mean, sorry, it's a French series. It's a horror series. Okay. Right. What's give us a give us the postcard uh, back of a postcard summary? It's you know this Marianne is a possession type of thing. Okay, I'm I'm, yeah, not, I'm there an, for a possession. The main girl's an author, and it's actually really creepy. I'm surprised you like horror films, Michelle. I'm really I don't know. I've got to reevaluate. Oh things. my god, I love horror. 
Wait till uh, you get my next documentary idea, Fenton. Well, are you you're looking down your nose at Michelle because she's a horror fan? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I just think I just I horror is not my genre, and so you know. But I love it. Think Tom isn't here because Tom gets scared. Tom won't even watch those. He gets very very nervous. <laughs> I, I just love them. I think they're fun. I think they're fun to like. I'm I'm the girl. I am the girl that you kids want to go to a movie theater to watch a horror movie with because I am the one that will be like. Ah! <laughs> well, if you if you are in a in a slasher film, are you the first one who dies or are you the last girl standing? No, I'm definitely the first one who dies. Are you kidding? <laughs> she's, no, she's the murderer. She's the slasher. <laughs> I'm definitely the, the screamer though. Like I'm I'm out loud in the theater and I'm jumping and I'm grabbing onto things. My sister screams too. My sister is so I just want to like gag her when I go to a movie because she will scream and she will yell back at the theater. Same. Say it the green. <laughs> I need to go with your sister. That's what I need to do. That's what that's it. <laughs> it's fun. Well, check out Marianne and then we'll we'll reconvene and talk about it. All, All right. right. We'll have you back to talk more horror, more shock horror with Michelle Vazai. <laughs> and yes, another please. reminder to watch X Plant this weekend, Sunday at the Tribeca Film Festival. It's the world premiere, and you won't be disappointed. Congratulations. No, like it. Thank you so much for having me on, kids. Love you. Bye. Bye. Love you. Bye. 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 Number eight. Number eight. Uh, I watched Bo Burnham Inside on Netflix. I don't know if either of you watched this. Uh, it's he's he, comedian Bo Burnham, who is just he's just very hot and, and very funny. And he, he uh, films himself over the course of the pandemic during lockdown. And he's alone in his studio, mostly just in his underwear, talking straight to the camera, making up songs. And uh, you think to yourself, oh, oh, it's too soon. We don't need any okay. pandemic. You know, we don't need any anything. We just got out of this. There's no we don't need to revisit this. And yet it is absolutely a masterpiece. It is just I mean, it's brilliant. And it's it's dark and it's melancholy and it's bitingly funny. And uh it's um it's hard to watch and he just uh he, it deserves every award it just deserves every everything go fence him is it a, is it a single one off or is it a series it's a one off it's it's just a special and like i said he's just a, he's he's in this um empty empty room and with this amazing sound system amazing you know and he's his piano and his keyboard and he's just making up songs about pop culture and social media and his own declining depression and his own declining mental health. Yes. Fen yes. Blake. I saw, I watched a little bit of this last night. Actually, I sat down with my roommate after we went to a quiet place Yeah, and or not a quiet place, the conjuring. And he, I told him that you were going to talk about Bo Barnum. Cause I didn't really know who this was. Oh, he's so up your alley, Blake. <laughs> and he put it on, and oh my God. I mean, I'm not for musicals or anything, but I know that's, that's just, I kept thinking of boys you. in their underwear. Yes. And <laughs> this, that is, he looks like Colby Keller. I love his 90s hair. Yes. Um, I, the the one song that really stuck out to me that Steven, my roommate, had like brought to my attention actually a little earlier was white women instagram, or white <laughs> <women> instagram. <laughs> he's, he's i'm a white woman on instagram and he's just i'm showing pictures of my sourdough bread and, yeah. you know, and like my cappuccino art <laughs> yeah, cappuccino <laughs> art <laughs> was it like filmed in one go or did he film it over a matter of months in the every same he films every single day of the pandemic and he makes up songs every single day just on the spot he's just sitting there and and some of them are really dark and depressing and others are just let i mean you just are rolling on the floor i cried i like literally i was sobbing at the end you go through this year-long journey with him alone by himself every and and he changes up the set every day he changes up how it's done every day it's a different type of look every single day it's just it's absolutely demand and it goes deeper and deeper into the rabbit hole of his mind as he keeps getting more and more depressed yep well who who is bo burnham i know he was in promising young woman right yeah like, give us a viewer's guide 
an idiot well, he's, guy. He's, he's he's a comedian, but um, it, it, he's he's like one of those comedians who's not so much funny as he's just sort of profound, and he will just sort of tell stories of his life that sometimes are just rollicking and funny, and other times he'll just go on these twenty minute, you know, com- in, in, during his specials. He does a lot of like HBO specials and network specials, and um. It's sort of like Kathy Griffin, I guess, a little bit where, you know, so it, he just tells these stories and he, but this is just, it's just every single day of the pandemic. And like I said, you think, oh, that just sounds just like uh, impossible, but it's so amazing. And I, I watched Mayor of East Town and we, like you over the weekend in Fenton, you know, you were saying that Kate deserves every single award. Bo Burnham deserves every single award. He deserves an EGOT for this. It's just fantastic. <laughs> They're going to be running out of awards to give out because there are some. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We, we just like foreclose on all the voting and all the nominations. <laughs> just give the awards. There should be. Yeah. Actually, what you need really is pandemic awards, right? And just hand them out. Like, well, I don't think that, that anybody post- ever needs to do another pandemic special ever again. I think he's done it and we can move on. I feel like that, that this is the only one that ever needs to be done ever, ever, ever. Well, and it has things in our sort of sphere, you know, TV execs always say, oh, viewers, the last thing they want to see is anything to do with the pandemic. Yeah. I just don't think that's true. I think that's, you know, like anything is good for anything is grist to the mill. Like why we should be we want insight and perspective on what we've experienced for the last well, it's year, true, right? but it's also it's also been exhausting and emotionally uh, you know we, we've been all put through the mill and i think right now a lot of people just want to experience joy and in, in going out again and all that stuff and we don't need to be reminded but this is this is absolutely it's 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 sad and it's melancholy but it's not depressing in a way that oh my god i'm back there again all right. Well, and there's so, also places in it where you can pause it, and he's in his underwear. And you, you there, there, there's, there's bow bulge. There's lots of bow bulge for you to to sink your something teeth into. for everyone in Bo Burnham's <laughs> Inside, streaming on Netflix. All right, we're going to take a quick break. Um, I just have to tell you, very exciting news broke this week. Miss Piggy is coming to RuPaul's Drag Race All Stars Six as a judge. Stop yes. it. Oh my god, that's amazing. Right? And she is I joining this piggy. a stellar lineup that includes Aisha Taylor, Big Frida, Charlie XCX, Tina Knowles Lawson, Alec Mappa, Angela Bassett, Cheyenne Jackson, Fortune Feimster, Tanya Tucker. I mean, F me, that is an incredible. Tanya good Tucker, week. What, that must be I I sense uh, uh Tom's hand in that one right there. Oh, I also you know it. You know uh, Aisha Taylor is one of my absolute favors, favorites, and Cheyenne Jackson is so handsome. I love him well, so much. And you know, Charlie XCX is like up there with Britney for me. So. Yes, I do. Oh. So there is, there's something for everyone this season. I can't there wait. Is. Um, Blake, do you have, and actually we have more Drag Race good news, surprise news coming up in the show. But Blake, uh, do you have a question for us? I do have a question. Um, it's a birthday question. Um, he was on a hit TV show with one of the three of ours friends. One of us has a friend that was on this TV show with him. And he was one of the highest paid actors in Hollywood when he was on this show. And is the godfather of his children is Stephen Fry. Who is he? Wow, these brain teasers, these birthday ones are so hard. I know, it's um, your birthday ones that are getting to me every single time. Yeah, Uh, we'll have the answer for you right after the break here on the Wow Report on Radio Andy. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report, things that make us go wow. And welcome back to the Wow Report. I'm Fenton here with James St. James and Blake standing in for Tom Campbell. Um, What was that question, Blake? Uh, It's a birthday question. It's this guy's birthday. He was on a hit TV show with one of the, a, a good friend of one of ours. Um, he was one of the highest paid actors on TV at the time of this TV show. And the godfather to his children is Stephen Fry, who is his best friend. Who is he? Is it, I think like, he must be a good friend of you. Whose good friend is? He's a good friend of a friend of ours, of one of you. He was, on a, he was on a TV show with a good friend of ours. Is, is he my friend? Mm-mm. Is he my friend? 
Your friend was on this show. My friend was on this okay. show. I I don't oh, have any... Lisa E. Lisa E. Yeah. Okay. And Lisa's man, Michael Douglas. Hugh Laurie House. Oh, oh, of course. Okay. Okay. Good question. Happy birthday, Hugh Laurie. All right. Number seven. Number seven. A couple of days ago, I woke up, and Jessica Chastain had dropped on her Instagram the trailer for The Eyes of Tammy Faye. And, and the reason I'm so excited about this partially is because years ago, we made a documentary called The Eyes of Tammy Faye um, that is actually beloved. And um, a lot of people say it's the best thing we ever did. As and opposed to that. other things World of Wonder has done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but... Um, uh, and of course, it's been, yes, Jessica Chastain bought the rights um, because she was on a mission to make this into a movie. And she has made it into a movie. It's coming out Fox Searchlight um, in September. And oh, my, my bless her. It's been a long journey. I remember we were supposed to have a meeting with Jessica Chastain to seal the deal. And Randy was on his way to the airport to for the birth of his twins. So, it, and his twins are now seven years old. So it was that long ago that we, that, and, you know, she's, bless has been on this journey to make this film that is now deeply tied to Randy's twins. So, um, and I, I, I can't say, but I've seen it and it's amazing. And, and the trailer I think is really awesome. It just takes you back. It's just got that eighties feel. I love that sort of low rent video eighties feel. And, and we, we got to say that Andrew Garfield plays uh, yes. Jim Baker. You know, and she is. Yeah. And that she is. She is uh, uh, Tammy Faye. Absolutely. I'm sorry. Yes. And and I think there was some skepticism when that was announced that, that she was going to be. But this is an amazing transformation. And she not only looks like Tammy Faye, but she is Tammy Faye. It's it's it, it's I get goosebumps from it. And and the pairing of her with Andrew Garfield it's an amazing combination. And is I mean, it mostly their early days? Does it take you all the way to her, her end? I mean, how how what is, what is the span that it covers? It's the span of their of their their their, their love affair beginning and their beginnings in televangelism, um, mm -hmm. and you get to see what an instrumental mm, what architects they were of televangelism itself. Uh, the heyday of um, PTL, praise the Lord, and Heritage Park USA, and then of course their downfall. Um, so that's the that's the the rise and fall of. And who plays um, Jessica Hahn? Who who's is there? Oh, is there a Jessica a character? Question. I don't know. Um, Cherry Jones is in it, uh -huh. and the, Vincent D'Onofrio plays Jerry Falwell. This is really you know one of the the main stories of the eyes of Tammy Faye was the the evil of Jerry Falwell. Um, uh -huh. uh, who basically whose evil stole, continues to this day? The well, that's right, with Jerry Fullwell Jr., of course, uh -huh. and the threesome with the pool boy. We talked about that on a, a previous episode, but um, yeah, Vincent D'Onofrio plays Jerry Fullwell, who basically came in. Jim reached out to him as a white knight to come in and save his ministry when it was plagued with the Jessica Hahn scandal, and he basically stole the whole thing and did an incredible betrayal of Jim and Tammy. Um, so it's it, it's a really great story, and what's so amazing is the way they managed to blend their acting with actual archive. Oh and wow! It, it's seamless. It's so brilliantly, awesomely done. So. I mean, when she was announced as Tammy Faye, I remember thinking, "Remember her in the Help?" Like she was the bimbo. Uh huh. I just kept thinking, I don't know if this is going to work, but I watched the trailer right before and was just telling Fenton like. 80s Tammy Faye, she looks exactly like her. Well, yeah. she has that southern sweetness down. She she's she's she, and she's a great great actress. Um uh, I it just I've seen the pictures that were on Entertainment Weekly and People magazine and I was sort of all over and she's really she 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 looks like it. He looks like I think it's going to be very exciting. I'm really happy about this. Do you yeah, think is, is this is, is this another one? Give them all the awards. Yeah, exactly. Give Jessica Chastain <laughs> the Academy Award and Andrew Garfield. Why not? And I throw in one for Dinsen Ofrio too. <laughs> I think it's, well, it's preemptively brilliant. To hold you I'm, over until the movie comes out September seventeenth. Um, 
I would suggest watching Kesha and Big Frida's video um, for uh, Raising Hell. It's kind of like a Jim Baker, Tammy Faye vi music video. like With Kesha Big Frida as Tammy Faye? Kesha. Oh, oh, Kesha is okay. Okay. It's really good. Watch it. And something else I should just plug, by the way, is that we're going to have a big Tammy Faye fest on WoW Presents Plus because we not only made The Eyes of Tammy Faye, we then made a sequel. Chris McKim directed it, Tammy Faye Death Defying. We then made a series, One Punk Under God, about James Baker, Jay Baker. Oh, one, I love him so much. Adorable. He's a, a punk minister um, with his own ministry. And just lovely, lovely, lovely guy, very much like his mom, who was... Such a beautiful person, and uh, I, I get a little teary thinking about her. I miss her very much, and and what I love about the film is that it it understands that, and it it appreciates her. It's fun and it's funny, but it also the 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 depths and the tragedy and the the layers really get dealt with. So that's it. You guys, Tammy Faye coming September seventeenth in theaters from Fox Searchlight. Um, okay, let's go on. Number six, James. Number six. Number six, I've been binge watching Third Rock from the Sun again, uh, the TV series from 1996 to 2001. Uh, it's about a group of aliens who come to Earth disguised as human beings and report back every week about what they discover about human beings. And it stars John Lithgow, who won Emmys every single year. It's Kristen Johnson, French Stewart, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Jane Curtin. There isn't a weak link in the bunch. It is absolutely hysterical. It absolutely holds up. It, um, it, you think like, how can a show with the premise this thin, like actually, you know, be okay after it's just a few episodes but every season it gets better and better and funnier and funnier and i'm thinking of like only a handful of tv shows in history get better as they go along sopranos veep breaking bad uh parks and rec, parks and rec got better absolutely yes uh buffy um and uh the tina fey I was 30 rock 30 rock actually got yeah. funnier and funnier every year. You're absolutely right about that. This, uh, this has some of the finest comedy since I love Lucy. There's an episode with Alan Cummings that where they get trapped in a hole and he's the hole master and he comes to get them out. And it like, I have never laughed so hard in my entire life. And there are, by the time Elaine Stritch joins in Jan Hooks, who I know you love, Blake, and William Shatner, and um, uh, who else? John Cleese joins. He's another alien. And who, was, it, who was the woman? She was the original uh, Weekend Update. Jane Curtin. That, yeah, that's that's Jane. And she plays the the Mary who is like just this sort of, she's she's the, the human that she, she and Dick fall in love. And it's Dick, Dick Tommy, Dick, wait, Dick, Harry, Sally, and Tommy are their names. It's just it's it's on IFC. You can get it on Hulu, and I just absolutely recommend everybody watch it. It just it's one of those things, Fenton, like Golden Girls, where you can watch a couple episodes before bed, and it just sit, sets you off to bed in a hysterical mood. I love that. What made you rewatch it, James? I just fell into it. There was a there was a marathon on IFC, and I just happened to fall into it. And all of a sudden, I was just remembered how just side splittingly funny it is. And it's just it's it's become my go to. Like I said, every night I watch a couple episodes before going to bed. That's good because that's yeah, you need that, right? I think that's an important do important after thing. some of the days that we have. I know. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so that is third rock from the sun. Um. Number five. Number five. I read this story in the New York Post. Uh, fishermen catch 280 pound chunk of whale vomit. Well, now is this what? what is this what? What is this? Is this is um, the stuff that you make perfume out of? Is it, yes. I had no idea. Yeah. I fell into Amber a sort of Grease. Google. Uh, yes. 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 Amber, uh, do you, how do you say it? Ambergris. Ambergris. Well, not ambergris. Ambergris. 
No, I think I think the S is silent if you're if you're a French. I I I mean, I suddenly felt so ignorant because I'd never heard of whale vomit as a thing before. Yeah, some of the great perfumiers from the past 300, 400 years have been using it, and it's it's that they say that when you smell it, your first smell, you are absolutely want to vomit. You think it's, and then you have another. If you do a second smell, it's the most beautiful thing you've ever smelled. Well, that's very interesting you say that because they say it's a combination of sweetness and raw animal potency. And for those who grow to love its exquisite yet elusive notes, the contradiction is part of the attraction. It's musky, has a sweet earthy aroma, a mossy fragrance, the damp forest floor, add a dash of ocean spray, a hint of cigar, and a little odor of the stable floor to complete the recipe for this exotic fragrance. Yeah, and it's crucial in making perfumes. I, I think because there's some alcohol in it. And uh, but it's also I, people have seen, you say that it's it's like a sexual, it's like potent. You use it to oh, if it? you know if it, it gets you aroused. Uh, Not as lube. This, <laughs> no, no, no. It, do you Maybe. know how it, do you know what it how it how it comes about is um it um Sperm whales, right? Yeah. They eat irritants like a beak, a beak of a bird, I suppose, or something. And and so inside their stomachs, they produce a slippery substance to protect the digestive organs from the offending articles. So it's like, I guess, like a pearl, the way a pearl is basically right. mucus. So ambergris is this sort of, um, yeah. But I think mucus. they can also poop it out as well. I think you, it either oh. comes out the front or the back. Well, and, and it floats in the water because it's lighter than water. And then beachcombers look for it. And there's yeah. a whole guide of like what the shape is and what the consistency is. If you hold it in your hand, apparently, it, it will, after a few minutes, it might start to feel soft and pliable um, because but it looks like I mean, a rock. If you find a chunk, I mean, absolutely, you can sell it for thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars. Well, this one that the fisherman caught in the, uh, off of the coast of Yemen was 280 pounds and they sold it for 1.5 million. I don't know what the hell we think we're doing, why we aren't out combing the beaches right now looking for our ambergris. Right? I was just fascinated by it. Have you ever read that book, Perfume? Yes, I I love Perfume. Philip Suskinder, Patrick Suskinder, yes. Well, is ambergris in that? I figured it might be a plot device or something. Well, I think he is born... uh, without a sense of smell or he has the best sense of it's, it uh, takes place in paris in the in the like 1800s and but i think that there probably is some amber there's there's a little ambergris in all of us i suppose i i, I guess if you're gonna go hunting a whale you shouldn't do that it's it's forbidden it's a controlled substance but um you know you can go beachcombing as and if you the test if you find a, a thing that look you think it might be you get a needle and you heat it up and you rest it on top and if it is ambergris, it will leave a line in the um, leave you a line right there in the in the. Does that make sense? The hot sure. needle tag. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, let's take a break. Uh, Blake. Yep, I've got a question. Um, Cobra stustophobia. I just sent you guys a message. I, am I um, pronouncing that right? Oh, co- co- copper set, copper, copper astrophobia. Copper what is that? That's copper stast. Copper stasta. Stastophobia. What is it's got that? Got something to do with poo. I know it's got something to do with poo because of the copper, right? Oh, 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 yeah. Okay, copper. Right. Yeah. Well, we'll, well see. Okay, we'll see. We'll have the answer right after the break. You're listening to the Wow Report on Radio Andy. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. And welcome back to the Wow Report. I'm Fenton here with James St. James and Blake. And we had a question. Yes. The fear, what is this the fear of? Copra stostophobia. Uh, the fear of the fear of uh, a- animal poop. <laughs> it's but. something else, the stasta. Maybe it's drowning in animal poop. <laughs> it's the fear of constipation. 
Oh, oh, good no. God. I'm afraid of it. The minute you said that, I thought I need to poop immediately and I don't know if I can. What am I going to do? Well, as soon as I came across this question, I just knew you would know it already. But Are there any famous cases of this, Blake? <laughs> not, not to my knowledge. <laughs> I haven't really dug deep, though. Oh, oh, <laughs> ew. <laughs> All right. Uh, we're counting down the top 10 things that made us go wow this week we've reached number four blake number four um i want to talk about a little pride karma have you guys heard about um the boaters who were harassing the people with a pride flag on the boat in washington state i don't know about this no tell me all right. Um, Trey posted about it on the Wow Report, and that's where I found out about it. Let me just read a little bit about it. A boat caught fire with three people on board after they circled another boat and harassed its passengers for displaying pride flags. Twitter user at Retro underscore Ushi underscore, who identifies as trans and queer, told the story on social media. These people harassed my family because we were flying gay pride flags in Moses Lake, Washington, by racing around us and shouting gay slurs. Then their blow, boat literally blew up. <laughs> <laughs> There's a video of it, and you can see, like, the people going around. There's some trashy bitch in the back seat, you know, like, yeah, honey, you know, really agging it on. And then, like, two seconds later, their boat's on fire, and then they're swimming towards these people who actually, like, took them onto their boat. Would you take on someone after they've been harassing you? What what that is that is someone who is a better person than I am for sure. Yeah. Um, Retro Ushi said because they were driving around us so roughly, they either damaged their carburetor or took in water and stalled. Then fumes built up, and when they tried to speed away, the fumes ignited. That is God'll get you. God'll get you for being homophobic. <laughs> well, and that's not even the best part. Um, and just one more tidbit. To really drive the karma in there. The driver literally shit his pants and everyone saw when his shorts fell off in the water. <laughs> <laughs> and it's all on the internet for everyone to see. <laughs> oh, that is awesome. That is some good news. It reminds me a bit of a time when, um, it wasn't there a Trump flotilla in Lake Mead. Yes. They took off to do a, have a bigger sort of boat parade and a squall and came down at all the... <laughs> It was, I think, in Austin, Lake Travis. Okay, Lake Travis. Lake Travis, Steve. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Rock the boat. That's what I say. What well, goes around <laughs> comes around, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So let's go on to number three. Number three. Number three. I want to talk a little bit about uh, Yasher Ali. Uh, this one comes with a trigger warning. Um, uh, if you, uh, it, it, we're talking about suicidal thoughts and suicidal tendencies. Um, and, uh, I want to talk a little bit about Yashar Ali. He's a political commentator. I don't know if you follow him. He's a, um, a reporter for New York magazine and HuffPo. He's uh, a talking head, a frequent talking head on television, on CNN, on Fox even, um, and he's been having, um, he, on his, he has a very enormously popular Twitter, um, and he's been going through a depressive episode and uh, he's been very open about it and talking about it, um, about uh, the feelings that he's been having. And every night he tweets, I'm going to bed now and I hope I don't wake up in the morning. And he wants to he says that he wants to die in his sleep every single night. And it's everyone is uh, it's a big Twitter thing. People are everyone's talking about. Everyone has a different idea. And he's saying he says, yes, I'm talking to a therapist. Yes, I'm on medication for this. And I'm just I'm not trying to get attention. This is just this is how I feel right now. And many people are saying that, you know, that this is a good thing that it's opening up. It's talking, you know, it's, it's opening up a dialogue and that um, you, you know, you should be able to talk about these things and don't hold it. And other people are saying that it's, it's triggering and that it's getting, you know, it's, you know, it's starting them having as ideation thinking about it and um uh, it's just I, I i don't know how you feel about that i mean is twitter a place for that or do you keep it to yourself and just deal with your t therapist well I, I think twitter is a place for absolutely nothing i i wish twitter just didn't exist to be honest really? i mean which is a separate issue yeah i mean i i sort of prefer instagram and facebook but i just think they're more useful and just generally more positive whereas i just see twitter as this 
hideous pile on. And um, but but don't I mean I agree. I mean I know that. Oh, I think Facebook. I I want Facebook to go away. I think Facebook is just the absolute worst. Um, Instagram, I agree, is is shiny, happy people sharing funny, happy things, and everybody is very nice on Instagram. Whereas Twitter, people can be very vicious and mean. But I think that if this is something that. Uh, I, I definitely think that he should be talking about this. And I think that yeah. it's, it's a topic that, um, you know, he's somebody who has a very big following, like his best friends with Chrissy Teigen and Kathy Griffin. And he talks about everything from politics to he's, he's obsessed with sheets and clean sheets and how often people need to change their sheets. He says it should be every five times a week. And huh? he will argue this to the death. I mean, he goes on, but then He's just now he's on this. He's on a depressive um, manic so depressive. Yeah. And it's. Just, I think you're right that it is that, that mental health is not something that should be ignored or swept under the rug because it is such. I, I do think it's a real pressing present issue in our lives and that yeah. talking about it is is a good thing. At the same time, you know, that people do talk about suicide as something that moves in epidemics and that, yeah, that, yeah. So, so it's, uh, I mean, the thing about suicide is always, I think that, you know, it's a permanent solution to a temporary problem. So it's uh, not a good yeah. idea. No. no yeah, and, yeah. And I think also there's a, there is this other desire. Sometimes I was reading a book about, I've been reading a lot about um, boarding school, which is a whole different thing, but, one of the things they talk about is suicide among teens and that it's actually more prevalent and covered up because of the stigma and the sort of shame of it. And that, and, uh, and they talked to some kids who've had those experiences and, and some of them said, well, it's actually not necessarily a desire to die, but a desire not to be here. Yeah. Um, yeah. A, a desire that, 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 for erasure, that which is... Which he, is he, he says, I don't want to wake up in the morning. I just, I don't need to, I don't want to be, do this. Which is not the same as, as self-annihilation. wanting to hurt yourself or yeah. harm yourself. Yeah. Right. Right. But all, all compact. I, I do think, you know, mental health is one of the biggest challenges we face in. in and it, it's interesting that somebody who is at the top of their game yeah. who is, who is, has everything to live for and is, is beloved and is, is, you know, firing on all five cylinders. That he's going through this, uh, I guess, just to wrap it up as always, if you or someone, you know, absolutely feeling suicidal thoughts, um, call the national suicide hotline, suicide prevention hotline is 1-800-273-8255. And we'll put up uh, that on the wow report. And James, can I just add, I think that is such a great lesson, like the idea that we think people should have everything to live for, yeah. but it shows that many of the values we pursue and many of the ideas of what success is, whether it's fame or whether it's money, these things are not real and do not really have any impact on our mental health and sense of well-being. And Absolutely. so it can affect anyone, famous or unfamous, yeah. rich or poor. And it's a terrible affliction, I know. Yeah. All right. Hey, number two. Number two. I just wanted to mention uh, Sugar Cane from, let's see, season 11, fan favorite of season, season 11 Jag Race, is starring as the Mistress of Ceremonies, um, Purgatory, in a new play that is opening in New York. And as you know, Broadway isn't yet open, but September, this new play is September, so brilliant. Yeah. Moises Kaufman, who was behind uh, the Laramie Project and, you know, uh -huh. America's most famous playwright, um, has, they're doing this thing called Seven Deadly Sins. And what they're doing is they've taken over seven storefronts in the meatpacking district. This is so clever because, you know, because of COVID, they have, um, you know, retail has been seriously impacted and a lot of the stores are sitting empty. So what they've done is they've taken over seven locations in the meatpacking district. And in each storefront, there's going to be a different play on one of the seven deadly sins. And so the audience comes together. They gather in the meatpacking district. And there they first encounter Sugarcane, who is purgatory, the mistress of ceremonies. And from there, they break up into little groups and go around to each of these seven plays. So you've got, you know, um, well, you know the seven deadly sins. Yeah, yeah. yeah. plays sure. on the seven deadly sins. Isn't that clever? It's really that clever. awesome. It's a I, great 
you know, solution to the problem of not being able to be sat inside a theater cheek by jowl. You're socially distanced in small groups with sanitized earpods so you can hear what's going on. It's funny that the only um, death seven deadly seasons I can think of are gluttony and lust. Those are the only two that come to mind. What are the well, other ones? You might right. think of sloth, James. <laughs> oh, I, yeah, <laughs> definitely. I'm very, yeah, that's Blake. Okay. <laughs> but Blake is it, Blake. And who else? What else? Sloth. Right. Green. Pride, that's Fenton. Green. Envy. Oh, I thought you are going to have envy. Uh, Tom. <laughs> That'll be Tom. Oh, no, he's not envious. He's lovely. No, he's not. No, he's not. Who's what? Wrath? Wrath. Wrath will be me too. I can be Wrath. <laughs> wrath. Um, wrath. Anger. <laughs> wrath. wrath. I, I find that so interesting. I actually just rewatched Seven the other day. Mm, that's a good one, isn't it? That is that is my favorite Brad hairstyle period <laughs> when he he had the Gwyneth hairstyle. <laughs> um, yeah, and that opens. Let me just get this right. It opens June twenty second. I'm thinking. Yeah, and it's from yeah the Tectonic Theater Project, which is Moises Kaufman and Madison Wells Lives, who are also in a little twist the producers of the Eyes of Tammy Faye movie. Ah, oh, ding dong. It all comes world, together, right? doesn't it? We always wrap it in a bow. Yeah. Let's take a quick break. Um, and when we come back, we'll reveal the number one thing this week that made us go wow. Wow. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. Welcome back to the Wow Report. I'm Fenton here with James and Blake. We've had Michelle Visage. And the number one thing that made us go wow this week is drum roll number one ruble's drag race live thank you blake is returning to vegas uh august 5th um and tickets are on sale now now is it um, the same is it the same cast is it all new people is it and yeah it's same, same cast. cast. uh-huh yeah. you've got uh asia o'hara great Derek Barry. wow Cameron michaels oh naomi smalls are those legs Miss Evie Oddly. Oh, God, I love me some Evie Oddly. And Miss Vangie. Vangie. Uh, does this mean that we're going to be having another season of the behind the scenes with the with the girls? That is TBD. Okay. Um, but um, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. If I can just put that into the universe, we enjoyed it a lot. I know it's it's a it's such a great thing. It's directed the show is directed by RuPaul, of course, um, with a uh, resident choreographer Jamal Sims. Oh, so handsome! And, and packed with songs by RuPaul, uh, Leland, and uh, Tom Campbell, who's not nice. here, but we can sing his praises. Musical well, genius, Fenton, Tom. Fenton, what is the show? It's like a live taping of RuPaul's Drag Race, right? Yeah, that's essentially, that's it. It's it's like. It's a sort of immersive experience. So you, the audience, are there as an episode is is taped, and it's got little interactive bits and pieces, and and it's a musical. It's a musical extravaganza. Um, but it's actually, and it's also very. I mean, it's very funny, very camp, very over the top, um, but also very moving. Um, the the mirror song is always makes me kind of cry. Actually, you know, it's like it's and and losing is a new winning. It's very much. It's very much an upbeat thing, um, but, but very moving. I actually have to confess, I've never seen the full show because I was in the UK when it opened and then and then COVID ruined everything. So I think we should do a field trip from Yeah, from I Vegas. Say, I've been meaning to take a Vegas trip for a while now. It's been years since I've been there, so I, I need, might need to go and see. Well, That's right. The the buffets are open again in Vegas. Oh, oh no, I don't know about that. I don't know if we're ready for buffet eating again. Katy Perry is doing a residency in Vegas. That's coming up. Vegas uh -huh. is back, baby. Yeah. And is Celine still playing? By it, bless her heart. Celine's, Celine's doing a new <laughs> show. Um, who else is in Vegas? There's a whole bunch of crazy stuff. So um, there's also RuPaul's Workroom, which is the immersive multi-sensory store at the Flamingo that'll be back open in August for the show too. Nice. Right. So we'll post the link on the Wow Report where you can go get your tickets. Um, perfect thing to do over the summer. All right. Thanks for tuning into the Wow Report. That's all we have time for today. Thank you, James. Thank you, darling. 
Thank you, Blake. Always a pleasure. And thanks to Michelle. And good luck, Michelle, with the world premiere of X Plant at the Tribeca Film Festival on Sunday. We'll see you same time, same place next week. Until then, go out and do something that makes the world go wow.